You know the songs, but do you know their history? <laughs> Join us for an in-depth look at the stories behind the biggest songs in the world. This is Encore. Ah, uh, cool. The stories behind the songs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Here's iHeartRadio's Miles Galloway. Welcome to, or welcome back to, another episode of Encore. I'm Miles Galloway, and this is the story of Nickelback's... Should I sing it? Look at this photograph. Photograph. By 2005, Nickelback had already laid claim to being one of the most ubiquitous bands in the world. Having already achieved unbelievable success with hits like How You Remind Me, Too Bad, and Someday, Nickelback had long crossed over from being a little band from Hannah, Alberta, into a bona fide global rock stars. Often imitated, but never truly replicated, Nickelback's 2003 effort, The Long Road, was already a triple platinum certified album in the US and Canada by the time the band was working on their fifth studio album, All the Right Reasons. Even with all the success, the band was not without its turmoil at the time. In January 2005, original drummer Ryan Vickerdell was booted out from the band after a royalty dispute and was swiftly replaced by former Three Doors Down drummer and fellow Canadian Daniel Adair. With Adair now in the band, the group quickly hunkered down at Mountain View Studio in Abbotsford, British Columbia, to test the new band's dynamics and begin writing what was about to become their biggest album ever. By May 2005, the record was done. Slated for an October release, the lead single, Photograph, was released on August 8th, 2005 and was an autobiographical look at the band's small town roots and the nostalgia associated with growing up in Hannah. Reflecting back in 2017, Kroger told the CBC, It's just nostalgia, growing up in a small town and you can't go back to your childhood, saying goodbye to friends that you've drifted away from, where you grew up, where you went to school, who you hung out with and the dumb stuff you used to do as a kid. The first love, all of those things. Everyone has one or two of those memories that they're fond of. So this song is really just the bridge for all of that. The song wastes absolutely no time getting you into its nostalgia-laden vibes, with Chad Kroger immediately singing the now iconic call to action first lyrics, Look at this photograph. Every time I do, it makes me laugh. Admit it, even as I simply said the lyrics out loud, you can hear Chad's voice singing it. And you could probably even see him holding up that photograph. Or at least one of the many meme versions of it, but... We'll get into that later. Late last year, Chad sat down with us and explained that there was no grand plan when writing the lyrics for Photograph. If anything, it all just kind of came to him. Sitting down with Jay Michaels of Chum in Montreal, Chad explained. So when I said, when I started playing the, the, the initial four chords of Photograph, I just said, look at this photograph. Every time I do, it makes me laugh. I, obviously just because laugh rhymes with photograph. That's, the, that's as far as I'd gotten. And then, I, and then I'm just sort of sitting there going, what picture have I got that makes me laugh? And I just went, bang. The one with Joey and I. And uh, how did our eyes get so red? Because it was New Year's Eve, and we were messy. Uh, and, and Joey had this stupid, it looked like a mini version of a, a, a Stanley Cup on his head. But it's just a giant champagne chiller. And then I, and then I, I went, oh, how did our eyes get so red? And what the hell's on Joey's head? But then I was like, but since I started with look at this photograph, then I just went into, oh, I know where we're going and everything's going to be a snapshot. And this is where I grew up. And this is where I went to school. And Kim's the first girl I kissed. And it's just bam, bam, there you go. <laughs> and, then, and then you know where it's going. Because I don't always have, I rarely have someone in mind and I let the blah, 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 to sort of go, Foo, and then you just, literally something just comes out of you. And, and I don't think that I'm spitting out all the lines. I think something would be like, oh, he's going to struggle with this one for a while. Boom, here, look at this photograph, idiot. And it's like, oh, look at this photograph. You know, the next thing I know, I'm like, look at this photograph. And the stuff just kind of, you know, just, blah, just comes out, right? And then you know where you're going. But once you know where you're going, that, then the tricky part is it's like you've really got to work on it. You've got to stay focused and you can't like try not to lose the plot. And the more descriptive you can be, the better. It's just like bringing a, a viewer into a movie. It's like bringing a reader into a book. You know, the more descriptive you can be at setting who, what, when, where, why sort of thing, the better the song is. By the way, that photo of Joey that Chad talks about 
That's Joey Moi, a true-to-life childhood friend of the band that wasn't just the muse for the opening lyrics of Photograph, Joey actually produced the single and the album. Authenticity was extremely important to the band while shooting the Photograph music video. Directed by frequent Nickelback collaborator Nigel Dick, who's still directing videos for the band to this day, nearly every single shot of the video is accurate to the autobiographical lyrical content of the song. Hannah High School, arguably the centerpiece of the entire video, is Chad, Ryan and Mike's real high school, and Chad really did break into it, at least half a dozen times. I spoke with Nickelback just a few weeks ago for the release of their new documentary, Hate to Love, Nickelback, and Chad still has incredibly powerful memories of the school and the photograph shoot. I think that there's some, you know, a, a, a really solid level of authenticity because we got to go back to Hannah and film it there, and everything just sort of fell into place together <laughs> that one was less tripping and stumbling for some reason right? and uh -huh. uh, you know to have my junior high school principal you know show up and and all these other you know all, there's all these you know, press outlets from across canada all showed up and they were there kind of do documenting the entire thing and it was very bizarre to be in the school that i actually did break into um so many years it was, a bit, it was a bit ambivalent yeah, it's but, like, yeah. It, it was almost like it was planned. I'll show you. I'm going to come back <laughs> here and shoot a video. Shoot a video. Gonna be, One day. Gonna be famous. I'm going to shoot a video sometime <laughs> in this school. Why am I in handcuffs? Uh, Again. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was, there was a, a very, there was a solid level of uh, surreal uh, going on. It was just like, what irony. is happening here? The was irony like, was yes. palpable. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Kind of a full circle moment. Yeah. 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 Armed with earnest lyrics, catchy melodies, and of course the aforementioned heartstring tugging video, it's no surprise that Photograph was a smash success. Photograph topped the mainstream rock charts, the Hot 100 charts, it went double platinum in America and remained number one in Canada for seven weeks. By the time All the Right Reasons was released, Photograph was all over the airwaves on both pop and rock radio and propelled the album to number one in both the US and Canada, selling nearly 400,000 copies in its first week of release alone. With further singles like Saving Me, If Everyone Cared, and of course the anthemic rock star, the album never dropped below the top 30 for over 110 weeks. That's more than two years, making Nickelback the first group to achieve something like this since fellow Canuck Shania Twain did it in 1997 with Come On Over. In less than a year, all the right reasons went quintuple platinum in Canada. And for reference, I had to Google just how many times platinum that even means. For the record, it's five times. I think at this point, it's probably time to address the elephant in the room. There is no denying that Photograph, in all its earnest glory, was a massive commercial success for Nickelback and a triumph for the band's fans worldwide. If you were a fan of Nickelback in 2005-2006, you were a fan of the most popular rock band in the world. But it would be dishonest to say that the band was without a legion of critics and naysayers. As you might imagine, Nickelback won Group of the Year and Rock Album of the Year at Canada's Juno Awards in 2006, and similarly won Favourite Rock Pop Album at the AMAs, as well as Duo, Group, Hot 100, Group, and Rock Album of the Year at the BBMAs. But Photograph itself was nominated for very few awards, and won even fewer. One review considered a positive one at the time by Whitney Pistoric of Entertainment Weekly of All the Right Reasons read, Those convinced that Nickelback has given us one of the century's greatest rock songs, How You Remind Me, will find quite a bit to like on All the Right Reasons. They're exploring a richer, more diverse sound, ripping off both Hoobastank and Seal, and the first single photograph is a dreamy slice of autumn weather radio rock that's sure to linger well into winter. Maybe 17 million Nickelback fans really can't be wrong. Hating on Nickelback wasn't new, even in the pre-smartphone, pre-high-speed internet era of the early 2000s. Nickelback were constant targets for jokes, parody, and even straight-up pure mockery and hate. For example, back in 2003, comedian Brian Poston had this bit on Comedy Central riffing off of a study that tied violent lyrics and songs to violent behavior. As the joke goes, he says, No one talks about the studies that show that bad music makes people violent, but listening to Nickelback makes me want to kill Nickelback. If you can believe it, music historians tie this skit to a sort of subconscious viral moment, a pre-meme meme, if you will. As journalist Sage Lazaro wrote back in 2016 for The Observer, the joke had the same allure of those typically made about Creed, but this one was broadcast over and over again on national TV. People eventually forgot 
the exact joke, but the sentiment behind it had the staying power to put Nickelback on the map as a hated band, a joke. This is important to the story of Photograph for two reasons. One, Nickelback had arguably never been this big before. How You Remind Me in the early 2000s was a huge hit, but it was their first big song and times were different. They were simply too new of a band to build up enough negative critical sentiment. People were waiting for a song to really encompass all the good and all the bad about the band so they could properly sip the hater aid. And two, and this is a big one, Photograph was a hit right at the beginning of the rise of social media and meme and internet culture. Let's take a step back for a second and ask the question, what makes a meme? It's hard to explain, isn't it? Ubiquity for one is important. You need to tap into something that everyone knows so that whatever the punchline, the quirk or the perversion of the image, video or gif is, the audience can identify what it's supposed to be. A wink and a nod to those in the know. Irreverence is also a big part of a good meme. It could be surreal, it can be nonsensical. In fact, you might argue a meme is better if it doesn't make sense, but certainly needs to subvert the normal expectations and authority of what you're looking at. Just like I mentioned earlier in the episode with those iconic first lines of photograph, I know you can also see Chad Kroger's face from the music video, the hair, the goatee, the glowing light around his head holding up the silly little picture frame as he says, Look at this photograph! It's just so earnest that it's funny, especially taken out of context. Long story short, it's a perfect base for a meme. The possibilities are endless of what's inside that photograph. According to YouKnowYourMeme.com, the first photograph meme entered the world a couple of years after the song's release. On March 23rd, 2007, YTMND user North American Danger D created a page titled Nickelback is Racist, featuring a gif of Kroger holding a framed photograph of a man in blackface. If you're asking why North American Danger D did this, you're missing the point. There is no reason. It's stupid. It's absurd. It's irreverent. And if it provides any sort of commentary on meme culture at the time, it's likely it's just, what if the man from Nickelback wanted you to look at a problematic photo? And that's all it took. Look at this photograph was officially a meme that could and would go in every single erratic direction you could imagine. Social media was just transitioning into a second phase. For reference, YouTube at the time was about three years old, and once the first set of memes went viral, there was no stopping the Nickelback meme train. There were straight up musical parodies of the song, endless loops of Chad asking you to look at this photograph over and over and over with himself inside each frame. Chad showing you a naked banana, a version of the song where every line was look at this photograph. And of course, everyone's personal favorite, look at this graph. You know, the one where the opening verse is slowed down and the word photo is removed while Chad is photoshopped to be showing off a bar chart. Classic. Speaking with Chloe Wilde a few weeks back, the band noticed this particular meme doesn't bother them and has even become a part of their stage show. St- stuff like like that whole, you know, look, yeah, look at this graph thing uh, as, as a meme. He brings it up on stage every night we're playing. Every it's night. Like, and it, it, and it's, it's funny because it's so stupid. It's yeah. funny. Stuff like that. It's like it's, it's innocuous enough and, uh, and still, and still you know, weirdly clever and funny that we can, yeah, the crowd and us, we're all, it's nice to everybody be in on the joke kind of yeah. thing, so. And, you know, if you go on long enough in this life, the literally writes itself. It just does. You just got to go for a while. Without walking you through every instance of the photograph meme, it's safe to say that it's become a staple of online culture. Every few months or years, there seems to be a new perfect moment online to post a new variation of the classic. And just when you could be forgiven for thinking it couldn't get more infamous, in early October 2019, U.S. President Donald Trump posted his own version. Without getting too deep into the politics, Trump used the meme format in a tweet to show his political rival and Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden and his son Hunter on a golf course with an alleged Biden associate Devin Archer in 2014 labeled as a Ukraine gas exec. Basically, the implication was that Hunter Biden and Joe Biden were corrupt. Nickelback successfully lobbied to get the clip removed from Twitter as it violated copyright law, but the tweet made international headlines and thrust photograph into the public consciousness once again. Unsurprisingly, streams of the hit subsequently skyrocketed. Over the years, public sentiment has softened towards Nickelback. You only need to watch any interview conducted in the last few years with the band to see that they don't take themselves very seriously. They fly the flag for their brand of music in a pretty harmless and fun way, and if their only crime was to make music that wasn't pretentious enough or trendy enough to garner them quote-unquote 
serious music accolades, it's probably not much of a crime. In fact, their aforementioned documentary, Hate to Love, Nickelback, is a fantastic look at how the band truly feels about their highs and lows over the past 25 years. Nickelback were named the most successful rock group of the decade by Billboard magazine in 2009 and seventh most successful artist across all genres. And the band was finally inducted into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame in 2023. I wouldn't be surprised if they have the perfect photograph from that moment. I'm Miles Galloway, and that was the story of Nickelback Photograph from Encore, an iHeartRadio podcast. Encore is an iHeartRadio Canada podcast. Subscribe to this podcast on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts. Download the iHeartRadio app for more great podcasts just like these.